It is your responsibility. Right? And, and the place where you can take responsibility is by stepping up and saying like, I don't know what to do next. Can you help me? We wouldn't be in this group if there wasn't that little glimmer that was just like, you can do this. It's not just your responsibility, it's your opportunity. All right, what's going on, Reboot Team? It is your friendly neighborhood, Reboot Hero 2 here, and I am here with someone very, very special, near, dear to our hearts and our Reboot family. I'm here with Dr. Jessica Eastman. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. So, right off the bat, so Dr. Jessica... Jessica, let's speak English this time. Dr. Jessica <laughs> is a trauma and communications a counselor and an expert and we are here to kind of pick her brain get to know her a little bit and once again thank you very much for your time making the time taking the time right off the bat for somebody who might not have already joined a session of yours could you introduce yourself a little bit further yeah sure so as you said i my name is dr jess Gieseman. i am formally trained as a naturopathic doctor and then have additional training as a trauma recovery coach. So that's my formal title here with Elevated Recovery. And so I'm here working with the guides in the program to help integrate the understanding of trauma and how it shows up in addiction and recovery and mental health and mental well-being. And then a lot of the nuances of that, which as you mentioned, is a lot about communication. It's a lot about relationships. It's a lot about emotions. Uh, so that's generally the world that we hang out in. Yeah, yeah. And it's honestly like an honor to hang out in that world alongside you in the groups that you facilitate and lead. I guess my first question right off the bat is for guys that have a history of compulsive behaviors and addiction, for guys kind of specifically within that arena, like what makes something like communication and being able to express or confront feelings just so difficult? Yeah, that, it's a great question, and I think that the answer is twofold. So one is not actually specific to guys that have, you know, difficulty with addictive behavior, and that's the fact that the world doesn't really encourage us to interact with our emotions or communicate about them. You know, like we are all discouraged from doing that. Most of us are not taught how to do that in childhood. And then as men even further, they're discouraged from really like being able to be in touch with and communicate about their emotions. And in order to communicate about something, you have to be in touch with it, right? Or you have to be aware of it. You have to understand it. So then the other piece that becomes really challenging that is more relevant to folks that are struggling with any type of addictive behavior is that the addictive behavior ha happened or, or initially began in a lot of cases or, per or was perpetuated in the other cases as an attempt to manage internal discomfort, right? We say it's like a, you know, an outdated attempt at self-soothing. And what we're talking about there is in reference to uncomfortable emotions. And then, so we've got this kind of like twofold perpetuating problem. Number one was that you never got taught how to learn how to feel your feelings and handle the uncomfortable ones in the first place. And then the addictive behavior further propels you to avoid feeling those feelings because it, it's, it offers a temporary distraction, right? Or a temporary soothing of the discomfort. And then, you have to make this really hard choice if you want to change of saying, okay, do I want to stop doing this thing that's short-term giving me joy or pleasure or at least, um, you know, ease, but long-term is maybe not what I want. But the other option is choosing discomfort, right? It's choosing, okay, then I got to sit with the emotions that my, uh, my addict behavior was masking or hiding. And that's a hard choice to make, right? It's it's very rare that we are looking at two options and one feels nice and one feels not nice. And we're saying, yeah, let's choose the not nice one, right? It takes a level, a higher order level of understanding of why that's valuable in order to be able to like go through the mud and 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 see the value in it. A hundred percent. And I and I love any meeting that you have, it's kind of become like a Dr. Eastman trademark, your world famous name validate feel. And that's something that I've been, you know, sharing with guys, any opportunity I have, you know, for a one-on-one -on, -one on my own end. And I find that, you know, everybody in this group, you know, in their own way is an intelligent person. So we can see a concept like that, like, okay, that kind of makes sense. Name, okay, I feel tired. Validate, okay, it makes sense that I'm tired because I had a long day, I had a crappy sleep, whatever it is. But most of us tend to, I won't say most of us, but it is a common tendency to kind of like Mario jump over the last step which is literally to feel it. 
So yeah. within your own experience, like, I mean, what is your insight on maybe some baby steps kind of going towards mm -hmm. being more comfortable with confronting some feelings or literally just giving yourself the time and space to feel whatever needs to be felt? The, the way that I will answer this question is actually to take a step back into the earlier portion of the exercise, which is validate. So there's two portions to the validate portion. So yeah, you name it, I'm feeling anxious. In the validate portion, there's two components. You say, it's okay that I'm feeling anxious and it makes sense that I'm feeling anxious, even if you don't understand where it's coming from. But the value there is essentially you are giving yourself permission to feel the way you're feeling. Right, so it's okay that I'm feeling anxious. I'm allowed to feel this way, right? Mm -hmm. And and the it makes sense part is really, you know, an homage to like, you don't need to understand why it's happening right now in order for it to be okay. And I and that's a bit of a faith piece for folks that are doing this work at the beginning because you're like, well, is it okay? But mm -hmm. having lots of experience doing this, I can tell you with a great deal of certainty, it is always going to make sense eventually but the, the catch 22 about feelings is that in order to really understand where they're coming from, in order to really understand like, oh, why you are feeling like that, you have to hang out with and feel them for a while. But if you can't allow them to be here, then you can't feel them, right? And so we just suspend our momentary need to understand where or why it's happening. And we just say, yes, it's allowed to be here. And then it's gonna be a little bit easier to tiptoe into the beginnings of actually feeling it. Um, which is the third step, as you said. So what I typically suggest there is, so you're, you're holding the feeling in your mind, you're saying, okay, I'm feeling anxious. The question I usually ask to prompt the next ent uh, the entrance into the next step is to say, okay, see if you can kind of zoom out and notice where you feel a physical sensation in your body that you think might be connected to that emotion that you're feeling in your mind. So if you think you're feeling anxious, do you maybe feel it as like, you know, a little bit of like butterfly tension in your chest? Or do you feel it as like a clenching in your jaw? Or do you feel it as like, uh, you know, like a restless ache in your upper back? That's all that you need to do, right? That And, and I think the, the thing that trips people up here is that they think there's going to be like some massive light bulb moment revelation that happens when you finally feel your feelings. Yeah. And it yeah. do that's, it, that does happen sometimes. But this is mostly a repetition game. And and so I think for some guys, it can be really helpful to understand why we're doing this. The intention here is getting your nervous system comfortable with interacting with discomfort and learning how to feel the feeling in your body, not necessarily just in your mind. And that's, those are the two really important pieces, right? If, the, if you're able to, if it feels comfortable to or safe to, the next step would be, okay, Let's just pay attention to that discomfort or that tension in your chest or that ache in your upper back. Maybe close your eyes, maybe take, you know, three or four or five breaths into it, kind of like you're meditating on it. I use different language to find whatever works for people, but like turn toward it and just practice being present with the discomfort. What we're working on there is expanding your capacity for what we call in psychology, distress tolerance, right? The ability to be able to sit in a moment that doesn't feel that great, but not get lost in the story around it. So you're not like, oh, she said this, and then I said this, and that that must mean I'm a crappy partner or yeah. you know, the whatever. It's just, okay, nope, that may or may not be true. I'm coming back to what does it feel like in my body and learning how to separate that, being able to hang out with the feeling for longer uh, is a big game changer. Yeah, there's the big game changer of thinking about your feelings versus feeling your feelings. Yeah, and I'm sure, you know, you could write a whole dissertation on like how feelings live within the nervous system and like how they live in your body. And like, you know, it's, I mean, we keep on talking about like feelings are information like about you, about like what's going on. You know, they don't speak, you know, English, they speak in sensations. So being yeah. able to listen, you know, you'll be able to actually, you know, get a better feel for what's happening, you know? So yeah. thank you for speaking to that. I think it's so, so important. Yeah. Yeah, as my far partner. as like, yeah. So as far as how your groups actually work for somebody that might not have attended, you know, as far as like what that work starts to kind of look like within a session of yours, like could you describe your sessions a little bit? 
Yeah, so in the the group sessions, there's usually, uh, you know, some number of guys that show up and depending on which session it is, either questions are taken live or questions are submitted in advance. Um, the best way that it goes is guys ask questions that are like somewhat narrow in a focus. So they're saying like, hey, I am looking for suggestions on how to help manage my insecurity when talking to women. Or um, what do I do in the moment when like, I am catching myself kind of like dissociating or checking out by scrolling on my phone and I actually want to reorient to like being present to my body or doing my journaling exercises or work on my reboot. And so guys will submit those questions or they'll ask them live or they'll or they'll share a, just a challenging experience they've had that week or that moment. Uh, and then I will do my best to answer it, you know, in the way that I can. It's a little different depending on if there's a, if the person is in front of me and they're asking the question live, then I have there's a little bit of opportunity for dialogue, and so I might ask, ask for clarification. Um, another thing that you'll often catch me doing is I, I'll give you a question back to your question to help you kind of like start to understand the way that I'm thinking about it. Uh, so the teach a man to fish versus give a man a fish kind of exactly. thing. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah, or if the questions are submitted in advance, then I will do my best to answer them broadly because they're generally submitted anonymously. And so then I want to make sure that there is, you know, some under some way of everyone as or as many people as possible being able to understand and connect and relate to this topic that we're talking about. But then in those cases, I will also always make some space for the guys who are present in that session to ask for clarification. So like maybe it wasn't the question that you submitted, but if you hear be asking and then answering that question, you're like, yo, can you explain what that means more? Or how does this apply to my particular scenario? And if you want to share, I love making space for that because it's in those live dialogue moments where we get like really rich understanding and deepening. And it really often pulls out other guys who are like, yo, I feel that too. Or that's the thing that I struggled with last week. I didn't even realize I was experiencing that. Um, and then it kind of just cascades from there. Yeah. And, I and yeah, I was going to say every now and then somebody will ask a question that is either so broad or so specific to their personal challenges that i'll say like you know this is i can answer this in components but the best way for this to be dealt with is for us or for you to do this work in one-on-one -on -one sessions with either me or another coach or a therapist or something like that because uh, right. there are some things that are just like kind of beyond the scope of a, of a larger q a um but no like you don't know what they those are so just ask the questions and i'll let you know got you got you so as far as questions that a guy you know somebody who's coming to the group could kind of come prepared to ask or like or let me ask this first what types of questions or what types of topics do you find are the most common in your sessions yeah so there's a lot of questions on um i'm feeling a certain feeling how do i fix it like, I'm feeling angry. What do I do about it? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, or like, I'm feeling really lonely and I just keep ending up, you know, on my phone or on my computer doing stuff I don't want to do because I'm feeling really lonely. Um, and this is where I think I got my reputation for being obsessed with the I feel because I just continue to bring it back to like, okay, the answer, unfortunately, <laughs> is feel your feelings to get them to go away. Yep. Um, so that's a common set of questions. There's also a, a, a solid chunk of questions usually around like, I'm feeling a lot of insecurity in this group or in my at work, in my friendships with, you know, in dating. How do I manage that? You know, when do I tell people about my participation in this program? How do I know if this is the right choice for me? You know, what do I do if I'm feeling uncomfortable? How do I communicate about all of these things in relationships of whatever type? Lots of communication questions. And then oh, I just lost my other thought. There was one more section of things that, oh, the other thing that I commonly um, hear about is people who are struggling to feel connected. So people who are feeling lonely, you know, like I don't have any friends or I'm realizing like, I don't have a whole lot of support maybe outside of this group. And I would like to build that. Like, how do I even start doing that? Or how do I begin having people to even learn how to communicate with. Mm. Um, how do I start to put these skills into practice? And that it, it's all really relevant. Like the the thing that we say a lot in the, in the trauma world is like, you know, most trauma happens in relationship and most trauma therefore has to be healed in relationship. 
which doesn't have to mean romantic relationship, but it can be like the relationship between, you know, you and your AP or you and your coach or you and a friend or you and your therapist or all of the above or, you know, within the context of a healthy romantic relationship. But, you know, in that in relationship coming alongside relationships is communication. And so we kind of just like emotions, relationships, communication, feelings is, is mostly what we hang out about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's so good. So kind of taking things in a little bit of a different direction. It's a little... <laughs> I like asking this question. It's a little grandiose, but why not? Let's just go there. Yeah. Uh, I am a little curious as to like what, obviously it's not just one thing, but what sort of led you into this sort of world, this sort of field. And uh, I guess the second part is like, what's your favorite part about it? Really? Okay, cool. Um, so the, the, I'll try and keep it succinct because it's not, because it is a big question. Like I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so my my initial, like I said, my my initial training is as a physician, and so I was for, first trained to take care of the body, and I was always interested in the brain, um, and always interested in like complex chronic health conditions, and the more I trained in them, I started to understand and see a lot of similarities and patterns, and understand that, you know, all of these people also were struggling with anxiety or depression or you know incredible amounts of stress or burnout or whatever, and so I started to see the link between mind and body and do a bunch of research into that and see like, oh, wait a minute, these are not separable. It's kind of insane that we think we can treat them separately. And so then as I built my private practice, it, it really became a focused attention or intention to manage at, um, both the mind and body of my patients, which was really cool because some of them would come to me for help with mental health stuff and some of them would come to me for physical help physical health stuff and we were doing all of the things for everybody anyway right. and and everybody was seeing a lot more benefits um so that's kind of the like foray into mental health in general when i was in my my internship year i was working at the um simultaneously working at the most expensive outpatient addiction facility uh, treatment facility in toronto and at the same time i was working at like a, a free clinic for unhoused populations that was mostly um, mental health and addictions. And it was a, it's a really wild, eye-opening experience because the only difference between those two groups of people is the resources that they had. The things that they were struggling with were exactly the same. And it, it was really considerably, you know, like impactful to, for me as a future clinician to be like, wait a minute, like this has nothing to do with how much money you have, although the success or the well-being of people is definitely influenced by how many resources they had. And so it really led me to like deeper research and understanding of like this, this is a human condition. This is a thing that we all experience. And then I had the privilege of that, that very extensive clinic that I worked at had Dr. Gabor Monte um, on the board of directors and he hosted like an in-person workshop for our little crew. And so we all went to it with our notebooks, like expecting to like learn how to support folks with addictions. And and it was a weekend and we got our asses handed to us because it was all like, you know, him being like, actually every human on the planet is on the addiction spectrum. Like this is a thing that we all experience. And so we went in there being like, we're gonna be good little students. And then it was like a weekend of therapy for everybody. Um, and I, and so like those two experiences happened all in the, you know, in the same year. And I really came away with like a, a much deeper compassion and empathy for these things that are typically othered. Like, you know, folks with mental illness, folks that struggle with addiction, like that's them. I don't have that problem. And, um, and, and when I realized that it is me, it is you, it's all of us, it, it became a whole lot more compelling because, you know, every bit of information and, and learning that I do to help you guys, I can use to help me too, you know? And also the more I understand that, the more I'm able to hold my ground and say like, I've been where you are, or I get that feeling that you're having it. I, uh, here's what helped me. Here's how to think about it in a different way. Here are the, you know, the many paths that are possible to take to get out of it. No, I, I mean, I love, I want to touch upon the spectrum because I never really heard of it that way, to be honest with you, like yeah. there's a spectrum. Sure. Yeah. There's levels and varying degrees to it and some of us might be further along some have more manageable but we all have our compulsions we all have our you know behavioral patterns whether they be conscious or subconscious yeah. that's really really interesting and the fact that you know 
doesn't matter how many resources you have at your disposal, doesn't matter how much, you know, dough you have in the bank, like, this is a human condition, and, yep. you know, everybody deserves, like, the equal amount of attention, love, that's, that's really, really interesting, so thank you for sharing that, thanks for touching on yeah. that. Yeah, my pleasure. I think the, the last piece I'll say there is like, at, you know, mostly the money gets you access to people that have lots of training, but the skills that I think are necessary that, you know, in my experience are what help people to get out of those things have nothing to do with money. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, you know, the things that I was offering that were helping people at the high end clinic and at the free clinic are the same things. And and, and so I think it, it's really, it is a really universal experience. and. Maybe that's a, you know, depending on your your perspective, that could be encouraging or discouraging, but I think it, it means that like, we're all there. We're all doing it together. Yeah. Um, and, and and then therefore it's possible for all of us to heal, you know? Yeah. yeah. I suppose as we start to kind of wind down a little bit, again, thank you so much for your time and, you know, making the time. I, I really, really enjoy like how you take like the conceptual and like kind of like turn it into the practical so i remember like one time i even brought up a question for example about anger you know like how do you kind of like work through it approach it this and that and you were like okay so again name validate feel you're feeling angry and you know it makes sense and it's okay to feel angry so push as hard as you can against a wall <laughs> you know yeah. so it's like here's the idea and then here's what you can do about it so i i appreciate that you kind of like hit it from both angles if you will sure. I suppose um so thank you for that so mm -hmm. i suppose like if you had any words for somebody in this group who of course everybody comes into this group for various reasons but a commonality amongst most if not all is that they've spent a whole lot of time struggling in silence whether it be in addiction, compulsive behaviors, uh, suppressing certain emotions that lead them to those, you know, further suppressing types of behaviors, particularly somebody who is new and might not have joined a session of yours where they can learn how to, you know, work with emotions and how to communicate effectively and learn about those in a healthy way. Uh, would you happen to have any, like any words for somebody like that that might still be figuring stuff out? Yeah. I think that the thing I would say to those folks is like, the reason why you're struggling here that that you've like had the struggle for this portion of your life isn't your fault this is a product of like you know inadequate training on how to handle your emotions and circumstances that were out of your control and genetics and all sorts of things right so it is not your fault that this has really been a struggle for you it's not your fault that this is hard and it, it ha it's not about like strength or willpower and the thing I often say to the guys in the Q&A as well, but even if you haven't made it there, like if, if you are stuck, that doesn't mean you're a failure. It means you need to ask for different help. Mm -hmm. And like I said a few minutes ago, like most trauma, most challenge has to be healed in relationship. We can't do it on our own. Like humans are not, we have not evolved to be hyper individual creatures as much as, you know, capitalism and society wants to reinforce that. Like. There's so much data and research to demonstrate that our health mentally and physically goes down when we are isolated. And so if you are stuck, if you are struggling, try and take a step away from beating yourself up about it. Because it is not necessarily your fault. It is, this is, this is like a tricky two sides of the same coin though, but it is your responsibility. Right? And, and the place where you can take responsibility is by stepping up and saying like, I don't know what to do next. Can you help me? Yeah. And that's what we're here for. I mean, like, we we know the answers to those questions and we can walk alongside you and there are a lot of us here doing it. Um, so you, you don't have to do it alone. And like, I would argue that you can't. And so the faster you accept that, like, okay, it sucks, but I got to ask for help. The faster you can feel the way you want to feel, you know, have the, the freedom and the lightness and the ease in your life that you are looking for, presumably, because you're here watching this anyways. Or at least. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I tell guys all the time, like we wouldn't be in this group if there wasn't that little glimmer that was just like, you can do this, you know, it, it, for anybody watching, I mean, just to kind of piggyback, it's not just your responsibility, it's your opportunity. Mm. You know? I so, like that. So thank yeah. you so much for providing not only, you know, just the space, but that opportunity in itself. 
So for anybody who's watching, uh, in this group, Dr. Eastman leads her calls at 3.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Tuesdays. So if you have a question re regarding trauma, regarding communication, regarding managing and coping with certain emotions and triggers, she's the person to go to. We hope to see you on one of those calls. Submit your questions ahead of time. I'm going to say it again, ahead of time. <laughs> Better facilitate the call and make sure that your question gets asked and answered uh anything else before we wrap up nope that's it you're great at this you should be at home <laughs> thank you for the validation yeah. all right desk eastman everybody thank you so much for your time